Hello everyone, welcome to Grade Up. I am Shantanu Sanwal. We are continuing the course on strength of materials. Okay, till the last class we have studied about the topics of bars and series in parallel and the strain energy concepts, the toughness and the resilience and all. What is the proof resilience? What is the modulus of toughness? What is the modulus of resilience? And also we discussed about the thermal stresses. Okay, the various cases in the thermal stresses. So in this class, we will be solving the previous year papers of the recently concluded gate examinations of these topics. So let us begin with the Questions gate 2015 set 1. Which one of the following types of stress strain relationship best describes the behavior of brittle materials such as ceramics and thermosetting plastics? Okay, this epsilon is the strain and the sigma shows the stress. Okay, so it is given for the brittle material, and for the brittle material, you know that the curve stress versus a strain curve is simply somewhat like this and then it goes here and this is the breaking point for the case of the duct the brittle for the brittle material okay so the correct answer according to this will be option d and let me tell you for the ductile material the stress versus strain the stress versus a strain curve for the ductile material goes somewhat like this okay this is for the ductile material but here we are not talking about the ductile material we are talking about the brittle material so for the brittle material it is somewhat like this so the correct option the most appropriate option which matches with this uh, case of the brittle material is option d subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any update from trade up okay let us see the next question gate 2015 Gate 2015 set 2. The flow stress in mega Pascal of a material is given by sigma equal to 500 epsilon to the power 0.1 where epsilon is the true strain. You have to keep this thing in mind that this epsilon which is given here, this is the true strain. Okay. And the Young's modulus of elasticity of the material is 200 giga Pascal. Okay. The block of thickness 100 mm made of this material is compressed to 95 mm thickness and then the load is removed the final dimension of the block in mm is asked okay so what we do we just equate we know the sigma has given as 500 into epsilon to the power 0.1 we just equate this to we know by the hooke's law that stress by strain is equal to e or stress is equal to epsilon into E. So just equating this stress with this value, the E value is 200 into 10 to the power 3. Why 3? Because this is given in mega Pascal, this is given in giga Pascal. So just keeping the value, the unit same into epsilon. Okay. So from here, we can get the epsilon value 0.9. If we take this epsilon down, we can find the value of epsilon to the power 0.9 as 500 divided by 200 into 10 to the power 3 and on solving this we will get the value of epsilon as 1.28467 into 10 to the power minus 3 okay and this is the true string okay this is true string so this true string because this is given as the true string so this is true string and we know that true string if we give it like this so we know by the definition of the true strain that true strain is equal to ln times 1 of epsilon where this epsilon is the engineering strain this is the engineering strain so we have the value of this true strain so on simplifying this we get the value of the engineering strain as 1.285586 into 10 to the power minus 3 and this is a strain that is the engineering strain and we know by the definition of the strain that this will be equal to delta L by L that is a change in dimension upon the original dimension okay so from here we can find the value of change in dimension as 1.285586 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 100 
because this is the initial length of the block okay so this will be 100 into mm into mm so we will get this value as 0 0.1285586 because this will be 10 to the power minus 1 the multiplication of these two and this will shift the decimal one place here so this will be this value so this will be this much <coughs> mm okay and the final value is asked the final dimension will be the final dimension the final dimension will be equal to the initial dimension that is the 95 after the removal after means what is what it is compressed up to plus the elastic recovery this will be this much that is 0 0.128586 so the final answer will be 95.128586 this is mm and this is the answer that is 95.128586 okay so the final dimension of the block in mm will be 95.128586 okay now let us see next question question asked in gate 2015 set 3 the strain hardening exponent n of stainless steel ss 304 with distinct yield and uts values undergoing is plastic deformation is for this you have to remember that for this case that is the stainless steel the strain hardening exponent n is given by this value that it lies between 0 and 0.1 so this is a straightforward answer if you know this you can just simply mark there is nothing mathematical in this the n lies between the strain hardening component lies between 0 to 1 okay the next question 2016 set 1 a hypothetical engineering stress strain curve shown in the figure has three straight lines pq qr rs with coordinates of p point q point and s and r and s has been given q is the yield point r is the uts point that is the ultimate tensile strength and s is the fracture point the toughness of the material in megajoule per meter cube is okay you know that toughness is equal to total area total area of sigma versus epsilon sigma versus epsilon curve total area means the area up to the fracture point so we need to find out this whole area so how we will find out this whole area this whole area can be divided into three parts okay part one part two and three okay one is a triangle two and three whereas two and three are the trapeziums okay so for finding the areas of area of area of triangle and trapezium we know the total area will be half base into height of the triangle the base is 0.2 so this will be 0.2 into 100 this height is 100 but please remember you have to multiply this value by, by 10 to the power minus 2 or divide this whole value by 100 why because this engineering strain has been given in terms of percentage okay so conversion of percentage into decimal requires that multiplication by 10 to the power minus 2 or division by 100 so this is the area of the triangle plus the area of the trapezium that is half sum of parallel sides this is the sum of parallel sides this length and this length that is 100 plus 140 into distance between the parallel sides this is 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2 this is 0 0.4 okay and again multiplying by 10 to the power minus 2 plus again the trapezium the third trapezium the sum of parallel sides that is 130 plus 140 into the distances between the parallel lines is 0.2 into again multiplying by 0 0.10 to the power minus 2. So this we get as 0 0.1 plus 0 0.48 plus 0 0.27 or which is equal to 0 0.85 mega joule per meter cube. Okay, this is because this is given in mega Pascal. So whatever we will get that will be already in mega joule per meter cube the only thing this is a very easy question okay the only thing that you need to see in this that this multiplication of 10 to the power minus 2 why because this is given in percentage okay that is the only thing which you need to see otherwise this question is really easy next see the next question get 2016 set 2 a circular metallic rod of length 250 mm is placed between two rigid immovable walls as shown in the figure okay these are the two rigid walls which cannot be 
which are immovable walls means that the walls cannot move the rod is in perfect contact with the wall on the left side okay from this side it is in perfect contact and there is a gap of 0.2 mm between the rod and the wall on the right side if the temperature of the rod is increased by 200 degrees celsius the axial stress developed in the rod is in megapascal it is asking okay the young's modulus of the material is 200 gigapascal and the coefficient of thermal expansion is 10 to the power minus 5 per degree centigrade okay so see what are the values that have been given to us the data that has been given that is delta t is 200 degree celsius and the alpha that is the coefficient of thermal expansion has been given to us as 10 to the power minus 5 per degree celsius and also we have been given that e is equal to 200 gigapascal or 200 into 10 to the power 3 megapascal okay so we know that the total deformation the total deformation that is present if we take this is the total deformation that is allowed and if we take this value as lambda so the total deformation that is equal to the delta the deformation by the thermal plus the deformation by the axial compression why axial compression because when the temperature will rise <coughs> the temperature is increasing so this when this temperature is increasing this rod will try to expand due to thermal expansion and when it will reach at this point this side will reach at this point and this is already attached to this wall so it will try to compress so there will be an axial compression and this total deformation will be equal to this lambda which is the allowed value of the gap okay so this thermal is given by <coughs> alpha into t into l plus axial compression is there so this will be minus r l by a e and this is equal to lambda okay and this value that is r by a is nothing but the thermal stress this only we need to find out okay so alpha t l minus sigma thermal l by e is equal to lambda okay so delta thermal is equal to <coughs> alpha t l minus delta divided by l into e okay so everything we have the value of alpha is 10 to the power minus 5 t is or delta t is 200 degrees celsius just supply this value in 200 length the length has been given to as 250 mm minus lambda is 0 0.2 0 0.2 mm divided by l is again 250 and this e is 200 into 10 to the power 3 on solving this or simplifying this you will get the value of thermal stress as 240 240 mega pascal this is just you have to supply the value this is a very standard question you just have to supply all this value and get the value of thermal stress as 240 mega pascal okay i hope this is clear let us see the next question 2016 set 3 the engineering strain of a mild steel sample is recorded as 0.1 percent the true strain is it is saying that the engineering strain is given as 0.1 percent okay engineering strain that is given by epsilon is equal to 0.1 percent so this has to be converted to the decimal value so 0.1 divided by 100 or which is equal to 10 to the power of minus 3 so we need to find out the true strain so true strain is nothing but ln of 1 plus engineering strain so this will be ln of 1 plus 0 0.001 so ln of 1.001 if you find this value you will get this value as 9.995 into 10 to the power minus 2 or which is equal to just multiply this value 10 to the power minus 4 sorry you will get this as 10 to the power minus 4 and on multiplying with 10 to the power 2 because you need to find it in the percentage the options are given in percentage so you will get at 9.995 into 10 to the power minus 2 or which is equal to 0.0995 percent so the correct answer for this option is question is option c okay very easy question just you need to apply this formula that epsilon strain is equal to ln that is the natural law of one plus engineering strain okay next question get 2017 set one in the engineering stress strain curve for mild steel the ultimate tensile strength refers to the ultimate tensile strength refers to the maximum stress there is nothing more to be explained about this okay the mild steel is a ductile material you know that this is a stress this is a strain this is a stress the curve goes something like this okay 
This is the UTS point, okay? This is the ultimate tensile strength and the UTS point simply signifies the maximum stress for the case of a mild steel or for other ductile materials as well, okay? Very easy question. Next question, set 2, get 2017. A cantilever beam of length L and flexural modulus EI is subjected to a point load P at the free end. The elastic strain energy stored in the beam due to bending, okay? It is asking the elastic strain energy in the beam due to bending, neglecting the transfer shear is. You can see this is the case. This is a cantilever beam. There is a load P. This length is L and the shear modulus and the flexural modulus is A into I. So simply you need to find out, you know that M at any section XX, if you take this section as X, so M at any section XX will be equal to minus P into X minus p into x and <coughs> you know that the strain energy formula is equal to integration of this <coughs> 0 to x m x x whole square dx upon 2 e i okay so this m x x is equal to minus p x so integrating this from 0 to l minus p x whole square dx upon 2 e i okay so this p square upon 2 EI is a constant, it can be taken outside integration from 0 to L of x square dx. This will give you P square by 2 EI <coughs> will come like this. This integration will give you x to the power 3 by 3 from 0 to L. So this will be P square L cube by 3 into 2 is 6 EI. So this is the strain energy for a cantilever beam subjected to point load at the free end. Okay. So the correct option is P square by P square L cube by 6 EI, the option, correct option is option A. Okay, very simple question, nothing much complicated about this. The next question, the last question, gate 2017 set 2, a rod of length 20 mm is stressed to make a rod of length 40 mm. Okay, the first it is stressed, the tensile force is applied to it, it is stressed. Subsequently, it is compressed to make a rod of final length 10 mm. First it was 20, it is stressed to make is 40 and then it is again compressed to make it 10. Consider the longitudinal tensile strain as positive and compressive strain as negative. The total true longitudinal strain in the rod is. It is asking about the true. So you know that about the true. It is ln of final length upon initial length. Whatever be the intermediary length, you are not concerned with this. So you find the final is 10. Okay. The initial is, 40, initial is 20. So this is ln of 0.5 and if you calculate this, you will get the value as minus 0 0.69. So the correct option is option B, 0 0.69. This is again a very simple problem of the true strain, okay? So this was all for this section on the PYSP or the previous year solved papers on the topics of thermal stresses, the strain energy concepts and the bars and series and parallel. In the next class, we will be taking some of the other topics of the torsion and bending and then we will move on forward with this course. So if you have any problems, any queries, you can write to us on the GradeUp app and on the website. Your feedbacks are always welcomed. And you can, till then, you can solve the number of quizzes, the mocks, and the daily test questions that we are providing you. Okay? So till then, we will see you in the next class. Till then, thank you.